All right, guys, I want to thank you for coming back for another video. Today may not be as exciting for some, um, but for others it may be. Um, while this is somewhat common knowledge in the GT500 uh, community, there aren't any videos on it. So I'm going to show you guys today my newest mod. Uh, it's the Billet Pro Shop um, ported TBS elbow. Um, I just picked this up from BPS, just came in now, we're going to get it installed, but I'm going to show you guys the differences between the stock Trinity TVS elbow and uh, this upgraded uh, larger uh, BPS model. So here is the elbow from BPS. Um, it is a bit larger elbow as well as um, kind of by accident, I ended up with a ported one. Normally they do not come ported. Um, they are bigger, um, but uh, for an extra small fee, BPS will uh, do porting on these and open these up a little bit more. Uh, they are claiming with the addition of this, it's about 10 horsepower uh, over the stock style unit that you'll see there. Um, they said with the porting, another, you know, five to seven horsepower. Um, I don't know if that is gonna be the case. However, um, the main reason why I got this, get a little bit of power now, but we may be sending that port or the uh, blower out to uh, Jason Teixeira uh, out of 1320 Junkie Performance. Um, he did recommend to do the 2-3-R, um, is to get this elbow, they'll cut off the flange and weld it actually to the blower. So it is a one piece design um, like the uh, uh, VMP Gen 2-Rs. And uh, he said he will get significantly more flow out of that. So I figure for the small fee of getting the elbow, um, like I said, I actually got it ported by accident. Uh, Sylvain made a small mistake on the order and ended up porting it for free for me. So Sylvain, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and then I don't know if we're going to get to test it out this year yet. Um, maybe on the streets we're going to test it out, but I'm not going to have any quantifiable data on the track um, because... Maple Grove is closed for the year now. Um, but again, guys, there is not a lot of data out there on these elbows. Um, they've been out forever. Um, just people don't really post a lot of data. Um, and the 07 and 09 community is nil. So I'm gonna show you guys the mods and um, my opinions on the mods. So we're gonna go ahead and get the intake tube off. Um, go ahead and pull off the hose for the catch can. Uh, we're going to get the throttle body and sensors off, and then uh, we'll get the uh, elbow in place. All right, so what I found when I'm working on this car, I like to take the filter off first, and then I'll totally remove this heat shield, and then I'll pull the JLT down, just because the sensor is a little bit of a bitch to get off. Uh, so to me, it's easier to just pull the pipe down, and then, um, again, pull off the catch can hose over here with the spring clip, and then from there, uh, we can work on getting out the elbow and the sensors and everything. And voila, heat shield is out. This is the old style JLT heat shield for reference. Put that on the side. And then take the flathead and start getting the uh, throttle body couplers off. All right, intake is out, that easy. And uh, you guys can see I have the Cobra Jet Twin 65 on that. All right, next you need to get four uh, eight millimeter bolts out of the throttle body. Uh, the ones down below may be a little bit tighter to get out, but that will unbolt the throttle body and give you access to the elbow. All right, so as you can see, we got the Cobra Jet uh, Twin 65 off. Uh, if you guys have never seen one of these before, again, these are kind of old news, but uh, these things are pretty big. Um, the bottom bolt hole down there is a bitch to get off. Uh, so now you can see, now we have access to the elbow and the Trinity. Um, you will see there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know, gas or sludge in there. Uh, I'm not sure why that's in there because the catch can should be catching any of the vapors coming out of there, but it is not. Um, but I digress. We're gonna go ahead and get this off. One thing you're gonna see different from my setup than most of you guys 
and the 0709s. You're gonna see my EVAP purge solenoid right here on the back of the elbow. Most people have that remote mounted, just kind of hanging down somewhere. Uh, mine is not, so uh, we'll have to swap that over to the new one and see how all this stuff works out. Uh, we're gonna get and get the next four, I believe they're eight millimeter bolts as well. Get those out and get the elbow off. All right, we got the elbow off. Uh, last thing we gotta get off is this hose here. Uh, this vacuum hose is held on by a plastic clip. And I believe you kind of got to poke at the bottom to pop the clip out. If you can see the, the end on the plastic clip. Um, and you will see there there is some oil on the inlet of the blower. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get some light in there once we get that off. And uh, see if we can figure out what's getting oil in there. All right. Actually, I was wrong with this clip. So you're going to see this is a, a plastic ring that goes all the way around. I actually pushed down from the insides and then was able to release the tension and pull it out. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the elbow side by side. All right, so now you can see side by side the difference in the sizes of the elbows. Um, this elbow is going to be a little bit more long. You can see there. Um, so it is gonna be bigger in size, a little bit longer. Um, obviously the opening has been ported out. You can see the difference there. And let's flip this guy around on the back side. And that's the opening for the throttle body. So you can see um, the difference in size there. Um, so it looks like there was a lot hogged out on the back side. Um, a little bit hogged out down to the bottom. So there is a, a pretty drastic difference in size. Uh, hopefully this thing will make some power. I'm not going to freak out about the oil. Uh, it was not a lot of oil. Uh, we can get the camera in here. Um, you can see everything looks clean and intact in there. Just a little bit around the gasket surfaces. So my guess is I have one of the original, not the original JLT, but the second gen JLT catch cam. And I wonder if that's just letting a tiny bit of oil in there and it was allowing it to seep through uh, when I was pulling under load. So that is my guess, uh, but I went ahead and cleaned that out anyway. We're gonna go ahead and get the BPS elbow on there and see how it fits up. All right, so like I said, my setup's gonna be a little bit different than some of your guys's. Um, because I do have the EVAP uh, purge solenoid sitting on the back of the original elbow. Um, like I said, most 0709 guys just leave the stock one in there and the stock one is a remote mount. Um, I guess when um, Bren Speed did this one, they decided they wanted to do a full 1314 setup. So um, that saved me 30 bucks um, to get the adapter from BPS is 30 bucks. So. Um, We'll take that as a win. So these are uh, 10 millimeters to get these out if you have a 1314. And then it has some kind of bushing on here that it slips into. Okay. And the bushing uh, actually sits on top of that and you just slightly pull that out to not rip the O-ring. So you're gonna see it's like an ejector, got an O-ring on there with some oil. Uh, you wanna keep some oil on that to be able to get that back in on the new piece. So mine is still already a little wet, that's good. And actually, that is not going to fit. So uh, I may end up needing to do a remote mount on that. Let me think here. Uh, let me see if I can get creative. So I'm gonna say that was a dumb moment. I forgot that BPS gives you a bag. Um, it has a um, gasket for the throttle body side, I guess it is. Gives you two spacers, which I didn't know what those were for, and two bolts, which I didn't know what those were for until now. So now this makes a little bit more sense. Go ahead and line these things up and see how they fit. So my guess is the spacer goes in like that on the top and bottom. 
and then these new bolts thread through there. So yeah, that is about right. So we'll go ahead and get these popped in and we'll get the rest of the install done. You're gonna see the uh, EVAP purge solenoid on the back with the spacers on um, while I drop tools. Trying to use my um, radiator panel as a workbench. Uh, but you're gonna see it comes with two Allen head screws. Just tighten like that. And this, they were five millimeter screws. So uh, I believe you're going to recycle the gasket that- Guys, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time for not doing POV view. Uh, my head mount is a little messed up. Um, it's not holding the camera straight. Uh, but you're gonna see, you got your gasket on the old one. Uh, just very carefully take a flathead or a pick in there and just get that started to pull that out. And now you have your gasket out. Now you're going to transfer that over to the new elbow. We're going to go ahead and wipe off the oil off of this first. And then we'll go ahead and transfer this over to the new elbow. And you'll see how this goes in. That's pretty much already form fit. All right. And actually, the side with the rubber gasket is actually the blower side. Um, they did not provide paper gaskets before, I believe, for the throttle body side. Um, they do now, so that's why it was thrown off. So we're going to go ahead and pop that back into place. Uh, you're going to see that there is an oval cutout there, so you can get the bolt started on wherever that is at. The back lower corner, the one that was such a pain in the ass. So you'll just start a bolt in there, slide it down, tighten it up, and then uh, you can swing the other ones into place. All right, so as you guys are going to see, the elbow is laid in place. Uh, that slotted bolt did make it slightly easier. Uh, however, having a fuel line right in the way here, uh, coming off of your fuel rail, does not make this an easy job. So uh, basically, you just want to get that snugged up here if you can by hand and then uh, do everything else with the socket but uh, this may be a little bit challenging one tip i can provide um, this fitting is to go to this vacuum line that goes on the back of the elbow um, if you guys can see there is a bolt right about there and the fitting goes right there you can't hit that bolt uh, very good without having this fitting out. So you can just pop this out. It comes with a little bit of a gasket sealer from BPS. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and reseal that back up, pop that in there, let it dry good, and uh, hopefully that thing uh, stays in there. Um, but the rest is already in place. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, um, if you align everything right, there is only a just a little bit of a cunt hair of a lip in there. Everything else is flush. Um, so I do believe that they worked on that. Um, again, in the past, some people have complained about there being a good lip at the bottom. Um, but if you see, I pushed the uh, elbow up as high as I could. And uh, that got rid of that lip down there. And that will also give you more clearance down here for the throttle body right around the fuel line. Now that I see that, uh, I might have to bend that line a little bit. That might get a little bit in the way. And uh, see how everything fits around this bar. And uh, once we get the throttle body on, just go ahead and seal this back up and test fit the rest. We did have to improvise a little bit. I just tried to do a test fit into the throttle body and uh, the strut bar was getting in the way. So I did already have spacers on the strut bar. I believe these are GLT JLTs. Um, went in, took off the strut bar. I'm gonna get everything fitted up and then see if maybe I can get another spacer for each side to raise that up just a little bit without hitting the hood. Um, or maybe I'll throw some washers on there. We'll see what happens. I really would like to keep the strut bar, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I went ahead and get, put the center back onto the back of the EVAP purge solenoid. I'm uh, gonna get the vacuum line back on there. And then uh, we're gonna let that uh, sealant seal a little bit. Uh, we got the throttle body and the gasket. Uh, we got the bolts. And we're gonna go ahead and bolt the throttle body back up into place and hope that everything goes as planned. So I'm gonna start one of these first through the gasket 
Actually, we'll start one on each side to hold that gasket into place. All right, you do that, hold the gasket into place. Go ahead and bolt this throw on the body up, or at least we'll get a couple threads started. to hold the weight of the throttle body and then uh, we'll get everything else situated. And actually you're probably gonna find here that you gotta start with the throttle body out more to get enough thread started on these bolts and then work your way in. Bottom bolts done, we're gonna go ahead and do the top bolts. I think these are gonna be easier to do with a ratcheting wrench uh, just because the indentations uh, on the throttle body don't easily allow for a socket to go on so again guys you don't want to crank these too hard uh, for obvious reasons you're going into aluminum so use common sense so if you guys have noticed before from the elbow this is longer um, the radius is uh, less of a radius uh, so it does bring the throttle body out more um, that's probably why I was having some clearance issues with the strut tower bar. Um, before the throttle body was just below the strut bar with those spacers, and now they're not. So we will conclude that the difference in radius has caused that problem. Now hopefully we don't find any kind of weird shit with the way that the cold air fits. And uh, we should be good to go. So now throttle body's bolted up. Now go ahead and put your TPS sensor plug in. Fits. And we're going to put our other plug for the throttle body in the back. All right, so I did just try and do a test fit with the pipe on of the um, strut tower bar. Looks like the strut tower bar hits right about there. You can see it on the bracket. Uh, I'm going to see if I can maybe adjust down on the filter house or the uh, filter pipe and the um, um, coupler and see if I can get this all to line up. So now you're gonna see, again, um, if you're familiar with how yours is, you're gonna see that there's this big radius there that, was, was, that wasn't there before. So what that's doing is that pushing the pipe out more and I can tell you already, without even getting this filter and this heat shield in here, that this did change that radius quite a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, shield uh, fully bolted on, get the filter in there and see if we can kind of adjust things and tweak them around to get everything to fit back the way that it was. All right, so everything is snugged up. I can tell you the filter moved up probably two inches. Uh, the filter did used to rub in at that gap there. Now it is, uh, I got it on as good as I could. It's kind of sitting down there and not hitting the fender. Um, but you can also see the area where the uh, paint was rubbed off on the JLT from where the filter was. So again, you can see that's that's gotta be at least an inch. Uh, when I got the vacuum line on, got the JLT line on. Now let's see where the strut bar rubs. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's no way that's gonna fit. Um, so I guess we are, <laughs> yeah, that pulled that out a lot. Holy shit. So um, if you can see, again, that pulled that out probably a good two inches. Um, so if you try and push down on that, you'll see it. That's already hitting the top of the JLT. So uh, my days with the strut tower bar are gone. Um, I guess it will clean it up a little bit, make it easier to work around. So I guess there's one benefit, but uh, I did like having a strut bar. Uh, but you guys can see it done. Uh, everything all plugged in, everything taken care of. Uh, started up the car, car started with no issues. I know I got all my sensors on, everything is good to go. Um, you can see, I know some people complained about the dipstick placement uh, with the elbow. Um, you can see it is a little bit tight. You got your uh, vacuum on the JLT and the dipstick is right there. You can still get your dipstick in and out, no problem. You might even be able to bend that out a little bit. I'm not going to do that. It's fine for me. Um, you can kind of see how big that elbow really is. 
So guys, again, thank you for uh, watching the video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm sorry if this was not exciting for you guys. Um, I may get the car out and try and do another test run uh, before it gets too cold out, but winter is coming here soon. So uh, we'll try and get a couple more runs on the car. We'll see if um, I can figure out if there was any kind of difference with the elbow. Um, I might not be able to get any kind of quantifiable difference without going to the track or going to the dyno. Uh, maybe we will try and now there's a bee on me and try and get away from this bee before it fucks me up. Uh, I will see if I can try and get back to the dyno maybe. Uh, see if I could blast out a decent pull in the dyno now that it's getting cool. Put a little bit of ice in it and see if maybe IETs really was my problem or if I got something else going on. I think now with it getting cold, now that I kind of got the belt slip taken care of, um, I think it will make half decent numbers. So stay tuned guys. Um, hopefully this provided some kind of information for you on the BPS elbow. Again, I know it's old news. I know people probably had these things for 10 years, but there's no data out there. There's no videos. So that's what I'm trying to bring to you guys. If you're trying to get into the 07 to 09 GT500 community, um, you know, Please make sure to watch the videos. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see. Next couple things you might see, I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to go E85 first and then maybe decide what I want to do with the blower or port the blower first and then figure out what I want to do with fuel. Porting the blower first makes a little bit more sense. Um, it's more value for dollar, but again, I'm still kind of octane limited. So we may end up doing E85. I may not go a full return style fuel system. I may just do big pumps, big injectors and let it eat see what it does um but give me guys feedback let me know what you want to see i'll see what i can swing over the winter as far as budget wise and uh guys your your views and your comments help support the channel help me bring these mods to you guys so i can show you how to do them so again please make sure to keep on liking uh keep on commenting and uh we'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching